Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. A Del Mar man is facing criminal charges tonight for allegedly posing as a plastic surgeon and groping a prospective patient. Good evening. I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Kimberly Hunt in for Lindsay Pena. Team 10 first broke this story back in August. And 10 News anchor Derek Stahl is in the newsroom now. Derek, prosecutors think there may be other victims. Yeah, prosecutors say this guy is not a licensed medical professional, but they say he performed consultations for breast augmentations and other cosmetic procedures at a surgery center in Del Mar. His name is Dario Moscoso. One woman tells us Moscoso had her undress and examined her without gloves. It's an absolute lie. Absolute lie. Never happens. 67 year old Dario Moscoso told Team 10 for a report in August he never represented himself as a plastic surgeon and never inappropriately touched patients. And if they try to uh, disrobe, I do not allow it. Absolutely do not allow it. But the district attorney's office disagrees, charging him with nine criminal counts, including two felonies for sexual battery. Where was he touching you? He pinched my nipples. He grabbed the side of my chest. Um, he lifted them up with both hands. Moscoso was the office manager at Del Mar Cosmetic Contouring Surgery Center, but included the words plastic surgeon on his Instagram page. That is a category of the business that I'm trying to get patients for. Did you think that Mr. Moscoso was a plastic surgeon? Yes, he what? wore a white coat. He had a clipboard. He had paperwork that I was signing. Jessica Pride is the woman's attorney. My client trusted that when she went to Del Mar Contouring that she was going to get appropriate medical care by a medical professional. And unfortunately for her, she was sexually assaulted by the office manager. The DA's office says there's evidence Moscoso conducted consultations with patients from as early as 2012 until the middle of 2019. At this point, it is an ongoing investigation. It is an exceptionally active investigation. And again, that's why we're seeking the public's help or information if there are any additional victims to please come forward. And we've got the number to call on our website, 10news.com. Dario Moscoso faces up to nine years in prison if convicted. He pleaded not guilty at a hearing last week. I'm Derek Stahl, 10 News. Thank you, Derek. A licensed and board certified plastic surgeon from La Jolla tells 10 News this case highlights a troubling trend in medicine, surgery centers that are operated by non-medical professionals. The uh, sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship is being threatened by this, um, if you will, this, this evolution into developing these MSOs, these corporate run clinics. To protect yourself, Dr. Brian Reagan suggests starting your search for a surgeon on the American Board of Plastic Surgery website. Experts also say if a male doctor is examining a woman's private area, there should be a female in the room. The Navy is clearing the air about a reported threat at Naval Air Station North Island that spread on social media. Navy officials have confirmed to 10 News that a sailor did make a threat against someone around noon and they evacuated a hangar while they investigated. The sailor was being questioned off base. Right now, the base is operating normally. All this comes, though, amid heightened tensions in the wake of two shootings at naval bases in Florida and Pearl Harbor. Just 10 days ago, a false alarm also prompted a lockdown at Naval Base Point Loma. And just into the newsroom, San Diego State is warning about a man exposing himself near campus. They realize that this photo is the suspect. They say he exposed himself to somebody in the parking lot at College Avenue Saturday afternoon. He ran north toward Alvarado Road. If you know who this is, police want to hear from you. We also have new information about the city council's vote to ban motorized bikes and scooters along the boardwalk from Mission Beach to La Jolla. Our tennis reporter Rachel Bianco is live outside council chambers. This was not a unanimous decision though, Rachel. No, Steve, actually it narrowly passed. Some of the council members thought that this decision was motivated by politics and emotion and not any scientific data. They also don't like the idea of a blanket ban. Now supporters of the ban point to images like these, people falling off of scooters, colliding with other riders, or people getting hit by motorized vehicles. This is the second time the council was asked to support a ban after hearing from many of the same complaints from the same people they voted 
it five to four in favor of it. As long as it passes a second reading, all electric scooters and bikes will be banned on the boardwalk from Mission Beach to La Jolla. Supporters say there are just too many people going too fast and too reckless on the crowded boardwalks. Please listen to your constituents, listen to your residents, act in the interests of public safety, and please make our, safe, our walkways safe again. I think the real thing we should be talking about here is, do we want to convert the boardwalk to pedestrian-only boardwalk? And that's really what we need to discuss. Councilman Sherman voted against the ban. He says that new regulations just went into effect about six months ago and that they were starting to see progress. Now, if the ban passes a second reading on January 7th, it would go into effect about two months later. Reporting live outside Council Chambers, Rachel Bianco, 10 News. Rachel, thank you. A 10 News follow-up now in the case of an Oceanside man wrongfully convicted of murder. A third person was arrested in the case of Horace Roberts, who was wrongfully arrested. On Friday, Guji Harris Jr. was arrested in the connection of the murder of this woman, Terry Cheek, in 1998. Well, last October, his father, Guji Harris Sr., who was Cheek's husband, was arrested along with Joaquin Leal. Cheek and Roberts were co-workers and had an affair. Roberts was wrongfully convicted of killing her. The California Innocence Project says that the DNA testing of a watch found at this crime scene led to the arrest of Harris Jr that his Horace Roberts DNA is not anywhere to be found on the watch. He was completely excluded and um, we were able to show that it actually belonged to someone named Googie Jr. Roberts spent almost two decades in prison and was exonerated just last year. Harris Jr. is expected to be arraigned tomorrow in Riverside. Your voice, your vote. The ballot for the upcoming presidential primary could be one of the most complex in San Diego history. The registrar says now is the time for everybody to double check their registration. As 10 News reporter Jared Ahrens explains, there's a lot of options. San Diego registrar Michael Vu has a challenge. This one election is the most complex elections for administrators like ourselves, as well as for voters that are out there. Complex because of rules that dictate who can and can't vote in each party's presidential primary. It's different. It's not so straightforward where you go to a polling place and you get one type of the ballot. That's what you get when you go to your assigned polling place. Now you potentially have options. If you're registered with one of California's six political parties, you can only vote in that party's primary. Republicans for Republicans, Democrats for Democrats, and so on. But nearly a third of all San Diegans have no party as their affiliation. That's where it gets confusing. We would have sent a mailer like this to them because on the back of it is their four choices. To clear things up, the registrar's office sent out about 550,000 of these mailers. No party voters can choose between Democrat, Libertarian, or Independent presidential ballots. They just need to let the office know which one they want. For everyone else, Vu is asking them to double check their address and party preference to avoid mistakes. We want to try to avoid all of that because what that does is only creates additional confusion on something that is already a complex election. Jared Ahrens, 10 News. Basically, if you got something that looks like this mailer, it should come up in a second. Don't throw it aside. It's a little white mailer about that big. Pay attention to it. Respond. The deadline is January 6th. All right. Authorities are relieved after finding a two-year-old girl who, safe who was abducted by her father in San Jose. The incident prompted a statewide Amber Alert earlier today. CHP says the 24-year-old Victor Magana abducted his daughter and stabbed her mother over the weekend. Authorities located their car at a gas station in San Luis Obispo County. Good Samaritans used their cars to block Magana's until police arrived. He was taken into custody. Attorneys for actress Lori McLaughlin and her husband are making a big accusation. They say the government is hiding evidence in the college admission scandal that could help their case. Laughlin and her husband are accused of paying a half million dollars to fake charity to get their daughters into USC. But in a motion filed last Friday, they submit information they claim shows the couple believed that that money was going to the school for legitimate purposes. They have pleaded not guilty to their charges. The full House is set to vote this week on whether to impeach President Trump. Today, the House Judiciary Committee released its 658-page report 
detailing their case for two articles of impeachment. But as ABC's Trevor Alt shows us, Congress and the American public remain deeply divided. A contentious scene Monday at a Michigan town hall serving as a metaphor for America at large. People on both sides with equally strong opinions about the possibility of President Trump's impeachment. I am glad to see so much enthusiasm for civic engagement. Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin walking out to a mixture of cheers and boos in a district won by President Trump in 2016 after announcing she'll vote in favor of impeaching the president, an issue where the American public is split almost perfectly down the middle. Today, House Democrats pressing forward. The Judiciary Committee submitting a 658-page report in which Democrats lay out the case to impeach the president and explain why they want that to happen urgently. Writing President Trump continues to jeopardize our national security and the integrity of our elections, and that Congress cannot wait for the next election to address the president's misconduct. That report follows a letter this weekend from Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, outlining his party's offer for what he calls a fair bipartisan process while urging current and former White House officials to testify. These people know better than anybody else the facts. There is no reason on God's green earth why they shouldn't be called and testify unless you're afraid of what they might say. So far, Republicans in the House and Senate remain unified in their support of the president. Several leading senators saying they've already made up their minds before the expected Senate trial even gets started. We're going to have fair proceedings and, and, and then it's not going anywhere because the facts aren't there. The House is expected to vote on impeachment on Wednesday, and that same day, President Trump is now holding a rally in Michigan, not far from that contentious town hall. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Washington. Democratic presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg is under fire as his company now faces three lawsuits for sexual harassment and gender inequality. Um, not everybody's happy, but we have an enviable record of uh, treating people the same in terms of compensation and uh, promotions and authority. Bloomberg is accused of fostering a sexist corporate culture by several women. The accusations echo what's found in this booklet from 1990 called The Portable Bloomberg, The Wit and Wisdom of Michael Bloomberg. It's a collection of quotes assembled by one of his top staffers as a birthday gift. It includes several sexist comments. Bloomberg says he doesn't remember making those comments. Beginning in January, Boeing will temporarily stop production of the grounded 737 MAX jets. The company made that announcement today as it struggles to get approval from regulators to get that plane back in the air. Boeing says it doesn't expect any layoffs as a result of its decision. The MAX jet has been grounded since March following two deadly crashes that killed 346 people. 